Look on it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. And welcome to the Three of Skeins podcast, episode number 58. Yes, I just take my notes. <sighs> so, it's been a moment. Okay. I do have something to talk about with my Dofuku jacket. I have progress. You want to leave it all the way over there? Yeah. Would, would you mind? Oh, goodness gracious. I thought I was all ready. I thought and you were too. there it is. It's all the way across the room. No, no, wrong bag. It's the it's like bag with Muhammad Ali there. on it. Thank you. There were like seven bags. Isn't that cute? So if you were here last week, I finished the back. And today, I finished the first front. I actually finished it last night, but for today, I have the first front finished. And you see, it slants. It's a V-neck. Now, my stitches are a little tall on this one, so uh, I reached the 22 inches without having to do any extra rows, because, you know, you have to do your decreases to shape that front, and then it says, okay, just continue, you know, even until mm -hmm. you hit 22 inches, but I'm already at 22 inches, so I'm not going to continue anymore. So that can happen because I am working at my own gauge not the gauge that the pattern was written at. So if something like that happens and it's not integral to the shaping, which it's not, it's just a V-neck, and I've already got the V happening, you can feel free to just go on to the next step. And the next step for me is going to be to um, do the other front. And it's going to be pretty much the same, only in reverse. And that's kind of what the instructions say. Do the same thing you just did, only, you know, the other way. And I made a discovery about this yarn this week. I never knew what yarn this was, really. It was something I saw from this discounter called Smiley's that we used to shop from when we lived in New York. And love them, but it was a rough and ready sort of place, okay? They didn't accept credit cards. They only took cash. They did not provide bags of any sort. <laughs> you could come with a garbage bag if you want and leave with all the yarn. So I got a couple of bags of this without even knowing. Turns out this is a rowing yarn. And I was very excited. I was like, get out of here. I got rowing at the best price ever. <laughs> you see, it is a merino wool with um, a bit of nylon and some angora and a slightly metallic thread. So that's where I am on Dofuku. So far, it's a really pleasant knit. I could see myself making another one of these, like maybe in something lighter for the spring. I think I'd like that. But I did have a little bit of a dilemma. So you guys know I thought it out, and I had initially decided on making my contrast color this hot pink. When I saw it in the drawing, I didn't like it as much anymore. I never liked the hot pink that you were listening. You didn't like it, but I thought I would like it because I like how they look together in as a ball. But I'm not crazy about it. The color scheme didn't work and the two different textures and it's just Oh, I didn't mind the texture at all because know, it's a it's a very narrow thing. Yeah, but it's still very narrow. Mm -mm. Anyway, I had liked how this looked with the warm pink. And the warm cream with the little glistening gold. But now I'm thinking I might like this better. This is um, Knit and Bro in the colorway Autumn Leaves. And I do like that it's a variegate. And like I said, the sections I'm going to do are one stitch wide. So I'm really just looking for a color. So I think I'm going to go with this kind of bronze gold sort of situation. So let me know what you think. I'm going to try it with like a blue. Because then it would like look nice with jeans. 
I think this would look nice with jeans. It would look okay. No, I think it would look nice with jeans. But no, I don't want to tie myself to always just having... You wouldn't be tied. It would just, it would just be a color. <laughs> I like this color, though. As you see, we have vastly different tastes. But now I'm thinking I'm, I'm leaning towards this direction rather than the warm pink. Let me know what you guys think. Crystal's anti both. <laughs> She's like, yeah. I'm less anti that one than I was the pink. I was like, the pink just doesn't go. No pink, no pink. How does the pink not go with cream? It's not cream, and you can't ignore the gold. You always pick out one color. I know, but I think pink and gold look good, too. Pink and gold look good. Cream and pink look good, but cream, pink, and gold. See it's not two happen. different things happening. It's all one. I know. I, 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 anyway, I decided against the pink. So we'll see how where I end up. So what are you up to, Chris? Uh, oh. No, I just, I started swatching. I'm trying to pick a stitch pattern for a thing. A very simple top. Mm. But so far, I don't know. I have this yarn that I love. Right. It is from Marionated Yarns. And the color, I think, is called Ghostbusters. <laughs> Let's see, that's the color Slimer is. Um, and so I've just been swatching them a little hard out. Oh. Uh, I'm trying different versions of like, sing I have like some extended single crochet and single crochet front loop only. And then I think people call this something like saddle stitch or something, but it's uh, alternating rows of half double and then singles in the third loop. So you get, you know, these raised ridges on the front. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. I want something. I want a little bit of texture. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell y'all exactly what's going on. I think I want to do seed stitch, but I feel like I just used seed stitch on the Linus jacket. And I'm like, do I want to use seed stitch again? But I like it. And it's just a really easy textured stitch to do. And I'll have to do some increases and it'll also be fairly simple to increase in pattern. I don't know if I want to use the same stitch pattern again. But basically, I'm just making a, sing a simple top. It's going to be basically a tube. I'm going to do an asymmetric hem and raglan decreases. It won't have sleeves. It'll be sleeveless, but it's going to have uh, raglan decreases. And it's going to have a cowl neck, and I actually forgot the other yarn. It's a different yarn for the neck. It's going to be really cute. But um, I forgot to bring it. But yeah, I'm having the dickens of a time choosing a stitch pattern. Sometimes this takes me a couple of days. For some reason, it's often the hardest part mm -hmm. of... of Designing something for me. I don't know. You know what it is? I tend I feel like I tend to use the same stitch patterns over and over again. So anytime I start to think to myself, oh, you should use something different. It takes me forever to figure you out what I want to use. If that's all it is, don't fight it. So I don't know. Did you why don't you swatch a seed stitch and see how it looks? It'll probably look great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working at it th with a three millimeter hook. Three millimeter is my favorite hook to use for fingering with yarn. I feel like they're like salt and pepper. They just go together beautifully. Um, so I think a textured stitch at that really fine gauge is, mm -hmm. is going to look stunning. But I'm good. I'm just gonna give myself another day or so to. Play around with swatching and then i'll probably just so, do the thing i thought i would do on the first day anyway yeah but <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you something though when um stephen stephen west has a new book out right and what he tends to do is once he finds a stitch pattern that he likes he goes with it okay so there'll be a shawl a hat some socks maybe a sweater all with the same switch pattern kind of exploring all the parameters that you know all the parameters of that stitch but pattern. he's often designing a collection and if i'm doing separate garments that have nothing to do with each other i don't know if that makes sense if you're liking the stitch and it's already calling to you i think you shouldn't fight it but we'll see we'll see i can't wait to see how it comes out but yes yeah, it's loosely based 
on a top that so you know i have this project i'm doing where i'm remaking some things that i made and not the best yard mm -hmm. um so it's kind of loosely based on a top that i made it's called the milan top and it's in a book by shannon mullet bowlesby called urban edge um but i'm you know, changing up like i said that the raglan shaping and the asymmetric hem is gonna make it a little bit different but it, that was like the basic idea. That pattern, I think, used star stitch, and I hate star stitch. It's just too much effort for not enough impact. Mm. So I definitely won't be doing that. But yeah, I think, which is not, this is not any of the things that I said I would be working on right now. <laughs> you gotta, you <laughs> but I saw jumper. this yarn on my shelf, and I was like, oh, I really wanted to do something with that yarn. So yeah, we made a little switch. And it's your cue, so you know what? I know. So but you're in charge of the order of it. I feel like I was doing really well this year. And now I feel oh. like my making has gotten a little chaotic. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Well, how how do you mean it's chaotic? What does that like, mean? Like, first I had to redo some things on the Linus jacket. Right. And then my break wasn't really a break, but then I had an unexpected actual break. And then I kept switching up the things that I wanted to make. And yeah, I'm just like, I was so like, I'm a very linear thinker. <laughs> and my making has been very linear this year. Project one, project two, project three, da, da, da. And, and now there's zigs and zags. And I'm just like, I'm not handling it well. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. What, what is happening right now? But I think I'm I'm ready to like focus on this project. I think is what I'm telling myself. Oh, you just reminded me. Did you actually uh, go ahead and make the changes to your Linus jacket? So I did the thing. I took apart the things I need to take apart. Mm -hmm. I just have some stitching back. I basically have to do that that collar stitching again. But she still looks good short. Yeah. I thought it would, but I don't think that that means that your making is in chaos. It feels chaotic to me okay. to not know exactly what I'm working on next. Oh, because I usually do. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. No, you don't know. That, that, I find that to be really, really amazing <laughs> because for me, anything can happen with my kids. Exactly. I don't want that. I don't want that at all. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. <laughs> well. Um, well, okay. I'm just like <laughs> feeling away here. But, but yeah, that that's where I am. And but there's like six other things floating in my head. You ever see a cartoon where someone gets hit on the head and there's like birds and little things actually flying around the head? I feel like I have like cardigans and things just floating around my head all the time. That must be nice. No. No, it's not. Oh. It's hard to sleep. Oh. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. It feels like if I'm working on one thing at a time, which is, you know, all you can do, you can only crochet on one thing at a time. I feel like I'm going too slow. <laughs> and so I just, I keep feeling like do more, do more, but I can't. Like, they're like human limitations. Exactly. And only 10 fingers on two arms. I don't know, maybe I can learn to toshe. <laughs> let's not toshe. Yeah, no, let's not do that. <laughs> but we did have some, oh, you know what? I had something and it was just in my brain and you said toshe and knocked it right out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I see, I see where we're at. Um, oh, I was planning to work on some swatches this week. Didn't get to it. I was completely like, you ever have your project like take over your brain? And my jacket took up all of my knitting space. And it was, and you know what I think kept me from working on the swatches? I was kind of dreading that really, really fine yarn. So, oh, Lisa. Yeah. So I, I, I invested all of my knitting time into my Bill for Pooh, but 
I will be getting on my swatch. It's true. It's just not as bad as you think. I don't I know. know. I feel like you have it built up in your head that like, I probably knitting do. at a fine gauge is like so awful. I, I just don't do. think it is. It probably is. I mean, I remember I used to use all worst of weight. And the mm -hmm. first time I used finger on me, I was like, why did no one tell me about this? <laughs> <laughs> I had tried. I had tried to tell her. It's just like, I don't think you're supposed to be specifically about finger weight yarn. Because other than the sock yarn you were buying, there really wasn't a lot of that at the craft stores. Yeah. So. And I was telling you guys, you got to try this stuff. It was just. But they used to tell me about my fancy yarn. So. She was good at yarn stuff. She was she was just very anti acrylic from very early on in her knitting process, and I was just like, "But it's so cheap." <laughs> <laughs> like, who's mad at acrylic? <laughs> and, and it wasn't even like I was totally like, "Oh no, never use acrylic." But I, what I had found was, as I started making more stuff, it just wasn't right for everything for me. At least. Yeah, I didn't figure it out because I started making garments because it's fine scarves, and I made a lot of scarves. But, you know, sweaters and things and dresses that try to kill you <laughs> require different materials. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had a bit of a yarn adventure last week. A yarn outing. A yarn outing. A yarn outing. We headed over to Slipstitch Avenue. That is a yarn store not too far from us in Bordentown, New Jersey. Hello, Vera. And she was having uh, a trunk show of a yarn called Hope Made Yarn. It was really fun. And as soon as you walked in, the dire Hope was like, I know you ah, too. Yeah, and I, I forgot about like, that. Oh, I'm so, because I immediately thought of like seven goofy things we had said or done on the podcast. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, this is what she thinks of me. <laughs> you know, sometimes, it, sometimes when we're just doing this, it feels like nobody's really watching, but it turns out. I, I totally, I think uh, the podcast is like my secret identity. I'm like, <laughs> I don't expect people I encounter offline to actually know about it. So when I meet someone who does, I'm like so embarrassed. But I hope if you're watching. Hello. <laughs> but oh, she's very nice. She's very yes. lovely. Yes. Beautiful yarn. Beautiful yarn. Great and, eye for color. I feel like she did this sneaky thing, though, where she had colors that went really well together right next to each other in her display. And because of that, you didn't just see like one yarn you wanted. You would always see like groups of two or three yarns you wanted because they were all right next to each other. And I was mm -hmm. like, I see you, Hope. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I think another nice thing she did was she she had made, she had knitted little Sw yes. swatches of each yarn and so that's on so much work. the oh my table gosh. that swatch was with the yarn so you could really see how the colors worked up and that was very helpful I thought that was very very cool and she had finger weight she had DK she had chunky I'm gonna have to get some of that chunky at some point and she had um, maybe a couple little ones the minis oh yeah she also had minis and I think it's great that she had Chunkies because you that's yes, rare to find. Hand I oh, hand yes, eye. that's rare to find. DK is becoming more available, mm -hmm. but it's usually 100% fingering weight. So, when you shopped, were you shopping for anything specific? No, I'm never shopping for anything specific. I really just I always want all the yarn. I know that sounds crazy, but. I mean, I didn't see any colors that I was just like, oh, no, I just don't like that. Yeah, just... there was not one. Oh, actually, I have pictures. Oh, yeah, I forgot to give you my pictures. This was one of the tables she had. And as you can see, it is just loaded with beautiful, beautiful color. She great eye for color, I think. Also, the samples you're seeing were made up in Hope Made Yarns. Mm -hmm. so you can kind of see them in action. Those are nice sweaters, too. Oh, yeah. Did a great job on that. I'll give you a little bit of a close up. There's the chunkies. Those oh. are the chunkies. I really want those. I might get some like at the beginning of the year because I do want to do a, a cute little chunky sweater. She oh, let me show you a picture of hope. Uh the lady on the is that the right? Yes. That's hope. <laughs> oh, homemade yarn. Her friend Keisha accompanied her. Keisha also has a small business that she calls Simply Vintage Designs, 
and she makes the most adorable stitch markers. She's a photographer. So she makes her photography into stitch markers that are the perfect size. Because you know what? I, I think that a lot of um, handmade stitch markers are cute, but some of them are just too big. And they were a great size. So do check both of those ladies out. They're on Instagram. And they both sell through Etsy. And um, Hope Store is called Hope Made Yarn Co. And Keisha's store is called Simply Vintage Designs. All right, let's show the yarn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to well, go first? So, this is what mom got. Oh, yeah. Um, she got this blue. It's called yeah. Deborah's Swell. But she got it to go with this yarn that she got from Three Bunny Designs, which is um, by Dialora Stout. So she's going to do something kind of like monochromatic. Yeah, but it's almost like a fade. And then she's planning to make something called the Alma sweater, and it has like um, a colorful yoke. So she's going to use that lighter blue, which is from Universal. That's Angora Lace. And so this is going to be her sweater. And is it, what did she say? It was crochet brioche? Yes. Yeah. That's what mommy got. And Lisa was all disciplined. <laughs> I only got one skein, but I think it's glorious. Look at that. It's called Red Wed Rhine. And that's all I think about. That song is all I think about. <laughs> I think it it's playing in my head right now. It's um, 7525 superwash merino and recycled nylon, and it's 437 yards. And like I said, Hope Made Yarn Co. is on Etsy if you want to check her out. Now, when I went, I didn't want to just run amok in the place. So I had uh, a project in mind when I went. Don't ask me exactly when I'm going to make this thing. What's but wrong? running amok in a yarn store. I know, right? It should be one of the places you, you feel right? free to run amok. But I want to make this shawl by Tammy Gore. It's called Livy. And it needed two colors that had a good bit of contrast. So I took this with me. This is some yarn I got during the wool walk. This is the Persimmon Hill Yarn and Fiber Club from Alma Park. And I just love this gray tone with the speckles of deep red and dark gray down into black and I thought together these would make an incredible Liffy shawl. So that was my haul. This this uh, this one yarn right here was my haul from Hope Made. Like what is that even? But look I already had something I that know, went wonderfully but, with it. And yeah. I feel like together they're going to be. You don't more. ever like think about other yarns you saw that you didn't get? They don't ever like haunt you a little bit? Not unless I really, really wanted it. But you know what I think focused me? Because I already had this and I had a project in mind, that was really all I was thinking about. Mm. Now, you did see me go around to every skein. Because you know what? Brought. So the yarn was actually in two different rooms. There's like a front room and a back mm -hmm. room. And now it's pinging back and forth between both rooms. I'm sure I must have looked insane. But I just couldn't decide. And what happened was in the back room, there were these three specific skeins that were like all different shades of purple that were right next to each other. Mm -hmm. And so I kept going back and forth, like looking at those three and then looking at the ones on the front table. And it took me a long time to decide. I finally did, but I still want the ones I didn't get. No, I actually, I don't <laughs> even remember the ones I didn't get because oh, no, I, am. I kept this skein in mind and I literally had it and I was putting it next yeah. to each one I was considering. Like that was cute. And everybody <laughs> was talking to me about it. And to be honest, this was the first one I had ever, I had picked. Mm -hmm. And I, I said it when I was there, I was like, Oh, I don't want to be that customer that goes around and around and around and comes back to the first thing they saw. But that's what I went. That's what I did. And when I put these together, it was so satisfying. I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. And I can see it as that shawl already. So I got no regrets. I, I got three skeins, but budget permitting, I would have gotten like 15 more. <laughs> so what I got, I saw these two together on the table. Hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is called, so this is love and it's pink with greens in it and then like raspberry flex. 
and then this is called garden party and that is very garden party yes. but what i liked about them is that you have uh, this neutral base and you have this pink base but they have the same color flex so they both have the green they both have the raspberry and i was like that looks awesome together mm -hmm. and then i was just going to get these two but i didn't know if i wanted them to be like right next to each other and whatever I made or if I wanted some sort of like border color. And so I ended up getting, what is this called? Mossy. And so I feel like that can either go between them, but see how it pulls out the green? Yes. And I am crazy about that. So I am utterly delighted. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> with what Me I got. Me too. But ciao. Don't let me have some foul money. I could have done some damage in there. Oh, you know. <laughs> I could have been Hope's best customer. <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm absolutely thrilled with these colors. I think they're so pretty. Yeah. And if this is a uh, 75 25 merino and wool, oh, merino and nylon. No, oh, recycled nylon. Interesting. I know. I noticed that too. I was like, oh, I'll have to look up exactly what recycled nylon means. But I'm I'm just like but really yeah, happy with what it, I got. But it was it was like a really good chunk show. She had just a ton of really beautiful colors. And so I'm definitely glad we checked it out. Oh, and shout out to the candy jar down the street. My hey, listen, I hear the little bell over the door tinkle tinkle tinkle. <laughs> and I like did Lisa just go out the door? And we were, my mom and I were talking to Vera, the, the yarn store owner, and a customer came up, needed something rung up. So, you know, we, we let Vera get to work and <laughs> Hope says, she said to tell you she went to the candy store. <laughs> now, in fairness, I did call out to them and say, oh, I'm going to the candy store. I, I didn't hear They didn't hear me because told. they were talking to Vera. So we so started out confused. I told Hope and Keisha, when you're looking for me, just let them know I went to the candy jar. <laughs> so I was like, okay, so now they know my whole family's crazy. It's Completely. fine. It's okay. So we, we, we chased after her. And the chocolate store is on the next, the next block. And we, we got some chocolate. They do. These amazing chocolate-covered marshmallows. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Handmade chocolate, handmade marshmallows. I don't think, I don't want to go back to the marshmallows you get at the grocery it's store. It's hard. They're, it's not the same. They have a little bit more density, mm -hmm. the, the handmade ones. And I didn't think I would like that. But, and then the ratio of chocolate to marshmallow Perfect. was spot on. What I want to do is go get some more of those and actually put them in hot chocolate. And then make cocoa and then throw those in there. But he also had hot cocoa bombs, so it's just like a big mm -hmm. ball of chocolate and they're decorated and you throw that in your, your cocoa as well. So oh we gosh. ended up with some chocolate covered marshmallows, some um peanut butter cups, and some milk chocolate non parels. Which Delightful. are called hundreds and thousands in some places. Interesting. Uh, who knew? Who knew? Wow. But shout out to the candy jar in Bordentown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time every time we go to yarn store, <laughs> we go to the the chocolate shop too. But and they had like, you know, all these throwback candies. They had bazooka gum. I know if you remember, I don't know if it was a regional thing. If bazooka gum was more popular in some places than others, but I know it was a very big thing in New York. Mm -hmm. And they used to come with a little cartoon. Yes, yeah, so a little comic strip wrapped yep. around the gum. And they had um, candy cigarettes, which, if you think about it, are a terrible thing. <laughs> but I it was, it love was my candy gum, cigarettes. you know, looked like a cigarette, wrapped in paper. And it had, like, this weird, like, dust on it. So you you could have one puff. You could make it look like smoke came out, but just, mm -hmm. like, for the first puff. Yes. And then you just hold it and look cool. Yeah. But what is cool about that to have, like, a seven-year-old holding a cigarette? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Let me tell you, times were different. They certainly were, okay? Because it was nothing. We were talking about that the other day, too. It was it was nothing, okay? Oh, my God. 
your parents bought you candy cigarettes. Right? <laughs> I mean, to be clear, it is candy. It's, it's not something you light up. It's not an actual cigarette. It was just in the shape, and it comes in a box mm -hmm. that looks like... A with, with a little camel on it, I think. I don't know. Yeah, because it was a brand of cigarettes. It was camels. red and white, so yeah. it was designed even to look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking back, right? that wasn't so cool. <laughs> it's a wonder we survived the 80s and 90s. How about the seventies, kiddo? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, because y'all were like the first ones to get seatbelts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and what the child and cars, the the car carriers. Oh, that came later, hon. <laughs> okay, because mom used to do this. <laughs> Sit back. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, candy cigarettes are a terrible idea, but I love them and yeah. I used to buy them all the time. Me too. <laughs> And the thing here's the thing: the gum is awful. Yeah, it you didn't want to chew the gum. It doesn't taste good at all. Like, and it was always hard, super hard gum. <laughs> but we we still like that candy shop. Yes, this is just, just, just stroll down memory lane. Just real, they had dots. They had everything you can think of <laughs> that you ate as a kid <laughs> that you wouldn't even consider putting in your mouth. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was our little day out. That was super fun, though. Yes, I was looking because who? Someone, Bolzac and Co. is having a trunk show next month. Oh, <sighs> he's far. He's an hour away, but it's a trunk show, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> I may have to be there. Perfect. Oh, you know what? I wanted to make sure and do. We have hit four hundred subscribers. I think it's time for a giveaway. Okay. So you wanna do it at four fifty? No. Okay. <laughs> we can do it at five hundred. Let's do it at five hundred. Okay. I think that makes sense. So let me welcome the new subscribers. We've just gotten an influx of new people. Hey there, welcome, welcome. And to the people who have just been hanging in there with us, thanks for staying and watching the videos. <laughs> I it's don't know amazing. why y'all here. Because <laughs> we're insane. <laughs> but thank you. It's amazing and thank you. So I don't know what we're going to give away. We didn't have a, a little meeting about that. But if you make a comment on this video, we're going to pack up some really cute stuff <laughs> and send it to you. Okay, so make a comment on this There'll video. There'll be yarn. There'll be yarn. And other stuff. And probably a couple of other cute little doodads that you're going to enjoy. All right? So that is the unplanned giveaway. That's what we're going to call it. So make a comment. And we'll choose from anybody who does a comment. Anyway, that's how we're going to do it. And that, that chaos, right? But it's yeah. okay. Yeah. It's good chaos. Yeah. There's no good chaos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and announcements. Uh, we are not going to post a podcast on Monday the 28th. Okay. I was like, do you know the date? Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Monday the 28th. That is the Monday after Thanksgiving. So we won't be recording we normally record on Thursdays, Thursday, so we won't be recording on Thanksgiving, week. so there'll be no podcast that week. All right, but we will resume the following week, so we'll see you then. And that was the our main announcement. And I'm sure was accusing me of chaos, but I have the list. Mm -hmm. huh. mm -hmm. So, what we wanted to talk about, I guess it's a continuation, really, of the discussion we had last week about swatching. Um, oh, can I say, so we mentioned Crochet ADHD and I called her Janine and her name is Jackie. Oh, sorry about sorry that, about Jackie. That, Jackie. Yeah. I'm terrible with names, child, but so it definitely wasn't personal, but sorry, it's Jackie. There you go. Um, so as you guys know, we, we swatch a little, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess for me... Swatching is just just part of the game. It's what you got to do. It's like you got to put gas in the car if you want to drive. So I think that's one way to think about it. And then we have tools that we use to help us with our swatching. And one of my tools is Stitch Dictionaries. And, you know, you'll have your favorites. This is one I go to all the time. It's the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. But I pick them up whenever I can. This is Super Stitches Knitting Essential Techniques plus a dictionary. So what this does is just gives me an array of choices 
in terms of different kinds of stitches, different kinds of edges, all kinds of wonderful, wonderful. And you see, I have my little pages marked. So when I am looking to make something, I'm not necessarily wedded to the one stitch that the designer happened to do. You know, um, in my dofuku jacket, I had just come off two stockinette projects and I didn't feel like knitting one more inch of stockinette. So I changed the, the stitch pattern. And while I did not find that stitch pattern in one of my stitch dictionaries, I did eventually have to go to my stitch dictionary to get the correct instructions. Because like, I think like a lot of us, I collect stitch patterns on Pinterest. Um, I don't. I do. <laughs> well, I do. Um, because, you know, there's this beautiful picture of the stitch pattern, and then there will be instructions somewhere. And the Andalusian stitch I chose for my project, the instructions I found on Pinterest were actually wrong. Mm. So when I knit it, it did not look like what it said it was going to look like. So I actually did have to refer back to a stitch generic to find the correct instructions for how to do it. And that's one of the things I like about Stitchers, the instructions are usually correct, mm. <laughs> rather than well, yeah. <laughs> stitches I just find on the those bare internet streets. What do you got, Chris? So the ones I usually go to first, although I have quite a few. Mm -hmm. We should probably just do an episode of our stitch dictionary. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I'll make a note. <laughs> um, yes, I have a few. Um, my my Japanese stitch dictionary. This is, don't ask me how I did this, but I actually ended up with a Chinese translation of a Japanese stitch, stitch dictionary. Oh, wow. But it, it's okay. It doesn't matter because there's almost no birds in here. <laughs> um, but the whole thing is just charts. Let's see. Here's a table of contents. That's not in English. <laughs> but um, it the whole thing is just charts. And so... This is also helping me learn how to read charts because some of the like the early ones, they they kind of pull you in. Oh, so easy! Oh, single crochet, double crochet, you got this, sure. But then you get further on in the book, and it's just like, what is that? I, I'm, I'm supposed to do? Where do I put the hook? So, hopefully, if I you know do enough work in from this book, I will be a, a master stitch chart reader. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other one that I really like that is very useful when you are designing is the Crochet Every Way Stitch Dictionary by Dora Orenstein um, because she also shows you how to increase and decrease in pattern mm -hmm. for all of the, the stitches she, she includes. And you wouldn't believe how important that is. <laughs> because when I made the first sweater I made this year, the tack sweater, um, I did choose a stitch pattern from here. Right. And I decided to do a, a V-neck. And it wasn't, I started with the back, so it's just a rectangle. But when I got around to working on the front, mm -hmm. I realized I didn't know how to decrease in this pattern. And it took me a while. It, it wasn't just a straightforward thing. You just drop a stitch on each row. Um, it, it took some finagling. I wrote down what I did. Hopefully I can read it because it was very late at night. <laughs> um, hopefully I can still make sense of it, but it actually, I couldn't do it at one end of the stitch pattern, which is where I started and it took me a really long time to figure out I couldn't decrease on that end because just of the way the stitches work, mm -hmm. I could only decrease on one end of the stitch pattern. Um, so having someone just tell you. Oh, that's how nice. to increase and decrease is a bonus. And I I don't know if I've seen any other, I haven't seen any crochet stitch dictionaries yeah. that do that. I don't know if that's typical in knitting. No, ones. most of the knitting stitch dictionaries do not tell you specifically it's, how it's to just rectangles. increase or decrease. The only one I found among the old ones I have is this one. Mm -hmm. She has a whole section about increasing and decreasing yeah, and the pattern. This, and this is also, Jap they're both Japanese books. Yeah. So. I guess maybe that's more maybe normal in, in Japan. Yeah. Matter of fact, there's even a project, a couple of projects where you um, make things that you have to decrease so you can practice it. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was like really neat. Because I thought those yeah. swatches. But it turned out I had to, I didn't even think about this before I started, but when I selected a stitch pattern for my dofuku, 
I didn't think about having to increase or decrease. Mm-hmm. You don't. You <laughs> I get all excited. I mean, and the back, like you said, the mm-hmm. back is a rectangle. <laughs> so when I got around front and I got up to the point where I would start slanting off, I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, ah, <laughs> yes, I know. I had that exact experience earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, so what I ended up doing was um, I figured out that what I would need to do is just ignore the first stitch and treat the second stitch as the first stitch in my pattern. And that sort of made everything work out. But there was a few moments where I was like, what do I do? What do I do? So when you started working from that book in particular because there are no English words in Mm -hmm. it. How do you figure out what to do in terms of the more complicated stitches? Like, how do you know that this symbol means go around the back? Or is it very visual? Thankfully, I have to say, I'm familiar with most of the the crochet um, symbols. I have other books that list all the symbols and I can look online. Um, there is one pattern in here that I honestly, I don't understand what they're telling me. So yeah, I haven't really figured that out yet (laughs) (laughs) because I have a stitch that's, you seem to be doing it like front words and backwards or something. Uh, Yeah. But, um, this one, there's a stitch in here where I don't know for sure where I'm putting the hook. I think maybe it's like a post stitch. I don't know. Yeah. So no, I haven't actually figured that out yet because there's no English in this book. (laughs) So I can't like look up the name of the stitch or something like that. Um, It's just going to be, that's going to be trial and error. Yeah. That's going to be something I'm going to keep working in different ways until I end up with something that looks like the the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got to do sometimes. But that's the other thing. Um, So don't expect all the answers. You'll still have to figure some things out. No. Hmm. All the answers. What? <laughs> what do you think this is? All the answers. Um, but at every stitch dictionary has its own little thing that I don't know makes it stand out from the rest. Like, like I said, this one talks to you about increasing and decreasing in pattern. This one focuses on stitches you can use for cute scarves. <laughs> you know, um, it really just depends on where your focus is at the moment. Because this one also features color work, stitches, it features lace. So whenever you find a stitch, yeah, I have a, a dictionary that's just cable pattern. Yeah. So me too, actually. You can find you know very specific things. Harder for crochet, but it can be done. Uh let us know though if you'd like to uh, take a tour of our six dictionaries with us. I think that would be kind of fun and it would give you a chance to take a look at some of these books so that if you want to add them to your knitting or crochet library, you at least have a peek inside. So when you are swatching different stitch patterns, I saw you swatching away yesterday and that's what inspired me to say, hey, let's talk about how we use our stitch dictionaries. What makes you choose one pattern over another for sampling? for a project you have in mind? You just go and buy, oh, this, um, I like this look. No, I, so I usually have an idea. Do I want it to be open or closed, first of mm-hmm. all? Because, you know, if it's open, you have to figure out how you're going to line that bad boy or what you're going to wear under it. Um, so whether it's open or closed, um, whether or not I have to do post stitches, I don't always feel like doing post stitches. <laughs> Those... the. Just specific features that I may or may not like. Do I need something that stretches Mm -hmm. or do I need something that's going to be really uh, like a firmer fabric, like a linen stitch? Um, Do I need to increase or decrease? Now I know to think about that. (laughs) But I I think about the features of the garment that I'm making that I want. Now, that sounds good. That sounds reasonable. Um, do I want texture or do I want something that's just plain? Like I'm planning to make just a crochet t-shirt and I want to do something plain. So I'll probably just do single crochet or maybe alternating rows of single and double. Something that's just going to give you a simple flat fabric. So if I, you know, texture comes into it, whether or not, or if I'm doing something that's a very simple shape and I'm like, oh, that's going to be boring if I don't at least add some texture to it, mm-hmm. you know. So it, it starts with how I picture the garment in my head. Right. right. 
uh, for me, that is, that's kind of the same process. Like when I chose this pattern for Dofuku, I didn't choose it right off. I tried out, I actually auditioned like four or five different patterns mm -hmm. by actually knitting them. And that enabled me to see how the fabric would flow, uh, whether it would be drape, whether it was just, I didn't like it. Um, I or if it's a pain in the butt to do. Exactly. I tend to not like patterns that are, you know, 32 rows long. Now, if you want to do something really like extravagant looking, you know, that might be something you commit to. Yeah, but... like lace patterns tend to be many row repeats. Mm -hmm. And I tend to like patterns that are four or five row repeats. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular, Andalusian Stitch, I'm planning to do it in another project because I just like knitting it. It works the way my brain works. And I haven't had a single row where I had to be like, oh, no, that was supposed to be, you know, row two, mm -hmm. you know. So that's something to also look at. Is this something you would really want to be bothered <laughs> Do you want to be chained to the chart? That's the other thing. I am not chained to the chart on this. It's four simple rows mm -hmm. and it's no fuss, no muss. Now, that's where I am right now. I might be in a place where I want to do something more elaborate at some other time. But right now, I'm just like, oh, easy breezy. Uh, for a knitter, I would look at whether I need something that will lie flat or... I have to figure out ahead of time how am I going to combat the curl, you know? But that that's about it. That, that's where we're at with picking these stitches. And then sometimes it's just nice to thumb through <laughs> and see all the possibilities. You never know what is going to, like, inspire you. And I find this dictionary is particularly useful for me anytime I'm thinking about doing something in multiple colors because you can find stitch patterns that are specifically designed mm -hmm. for more than one color. Yeah. And that's, I find that that's just not how I think. So I, I really need the reference mm -hmm. of a stitch dictionary to help me figure that out. I like that. But it's a way to kind of spice up basic stripes though. Oh, absolutely. Look at that. Absolutely. But I don't really see Elisa is always asking me, well, oh, can we talk about how, how you work and how you do that? And I'm like, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I don't feel like I have a a particular system or methodology mm -hmm. for um working with a sits dictionary. I guess honestly, till I talked about it, I didn't realize how much the, the garment I already had in my head played a role yeah. because I can just eliminate some stitches just by looking at them. Absolutely. Say, okay, that's not right for what I'm doing. But it really is just trial and error. You flip through and you find something that you think is pretty and then you work it and either you're like, oh, that's a pain in the butt to do mm -hmm. or it's not right for this garment. Um, there, There's no shortcut. There's there's no way. Yeah. If there's no way to absolutely just from looking at it, match the stitch pattern to the garment. Yeah. You just have to work it in the yarn you're planning to use. Although I do like... Um, stitch dictionaries that are arranged by function, like this one, and the, both of these are actually arranged. Um, and so the, all the edgings are together. All of the, you know, finishing stitches are together. And I find that that's a shortcut for me when I'm looking for something, because now I don't have to look through every pattern in this thing and figure out how I could use it on an edge. I can just go to the edging section. Yeah, and crochet six sectionaries tend to be like categories. So yeah. patterns that have baubles or patterns that have post stitches or um, lacy patterns or this one has a, um, the Dora Ornstein book has a category exploding shells. So anything that's just <laughs> like shell that. or kind of like fan stitches, um, rippling stitches is their own category. Um, this book has a section that is all color work patterns. So it's the last section in the book. I mean, it's not the last section. It might be the second to last section of the book. But yeah, this is all just color work. So 
that that is quite useful <laughs> because if i want texture i can just confine myself to the texture section oh this book yeah. you know like there's a section that's color work there's a section that's lace stitches but other than that i don't always know what joins the stitches together because i can't read the category name <laughs> but <laughs> that that's okay like this seems to be like a mesh fillet kind of situation, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, they tend to be, I have one book, I guess, yeah, that one's arranged in categories too, but I don't know that their categories always make sense to me. But yeah, that is helpful. So like, for instance, I know I don't like to do bobbles or popcorn. Right. So I can just ignore that whole section. Or if I find one where, you know, they just drop an occasional bobble or popcorn, that's fine. But I find that that's like, like as you see, they're tabbed out because I have my little favorites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. And if you develop some favorites, that's great because then you develop stitches that you develop your own stitch library and stitch language so that you have stitches that can become your go-tos that you can just plop onto whatever. Like something like this, I will probably never knit because look, you see the chart? Oh, that 12 trillion you rows in the chart. Do it. I could, but the question is, do I want to? Like, this would be a pretty sleeve. Oh, that would be gorgeous sweater. sleeve. That would be actually gorgeously. And in my heart, I love this one, but <laughs> I don't know. But do consider if you're gonna just add one or two books to your stitch dictionary over the to your stitch library over the year, I would at least throw in one stitch dictionary. And I find it helpful to uh, when I'm at the bookstore or at the library book sale, I'm looking through for these kind of things because you literally never know which one you're going to find. And, and realize you. that you can use a stitch dictionary with a pattern. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the, the stitch pattern that's used in that pattern for some reason, you can pick something from the stitch dictionary and if you can also choose something. If you can find something that has the same pattern repeat, it might make it simpler for you. But you don't have to because if you watch the swatch video, Aha. you know how to figure out how many stitches you will need to do. But um, it, yeah, it's not just stitch dictionaries are not just for people who are designing their own garments. Because mm -hmm. as you see uh, with the dofuku, in the original, the original jacket, here's a picture of it. It's all stockinette. Like I said, I didn't didn't want to knit any more stockinette. And I got the correct way to do Andalusian stitch from this book. <laughs> oh, that's the other thing about stitch dictionaries. Sometimes the names of the stitches are not standardized. Yeah, and crochet, forget about it. Yeah, sometimes whoever put the book together gave everything a number or a fanciful name. So it just so happened that the stitch was called Andalusian stitch in this book too, because it's a, it's a traditional stitch, it's an old stitch. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't be put off by that. Once you um, get used to that idea, you'll, you'll notice that some stitches just have three or four different names, mm -hmm. depending on who's talking about it. That's all we had to say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for sharing this time with us. Do comment, please share and like. It really helps the channel to grow. And we will be announcing our giveaway winner, I guess, when we come back from Thanksgiving break. All righty. Have a good week. Stay stitching.